years. I can't believe it. It was started in 1924 by Carl Tucson, my grandfather, his brother, Dick Tucson, and uh, a few of their bachelor friends. And they wanted to have a club really about nothing. They just wanted to have fun. They, they named it the Tigers. You know why they named it the Tigers? You want to talk? <laughs> <laughs> I got tiger socks. At the time, there was the Elks, there was the Lions. But you know what? Armenians weren't allowed in these clubs. So they created their own club. They said, you know, if they're not going to let us join the, the Elks or the Lions, we're going to create our own club. Tigers. That's why we have the Tigers. <laughs> and it's. Every month, it's really a club about nothing, you know, like the Seinfeld show. <laughs> we meet once a month, we have a nice dinner, somebody hosts the dinner, two guys host the dinner actually, and uh, we have a good time, we tell jokes, there's really no purpose behind the club. <laughs> They've been doing this for a hundred years, and a lot of things have changed over the hundred years. When they started the club, there was no TV. Movies didn't even have sound in 1924. You know what's crazy? Men couldn't even have babies. <laughs> now to now, supposedly they can have kids. A lot of things have changed. Huh? We've had the Great Depression. We've had World War II, the Vietnam War. All this stuff has happened. The Tigers have survived. Can you believe that? How many, how many people here tonight have a relative that was in the Tigers? There's a photo from 1930, and everyone's name is on the photo. How many people have a relative from 1930 on that photo? I'm just looking how far this goes back. And the dress code has changed. Back in 1930, everyone wore a suit. Very dapper, tied. 1974, there's a photo from 1974, the men and the women. Everyone had suits on, ties. 1994, and a little bit more lax. They had ties, no suits. 2000s, maybe a couple guys had a tie, suit. But 2023, we're wearing shorts. Look how nice that is. We have minutes from 1937 there. Wow. Right there. We found the minutes in the book. We photocopied it. 1937 minutes. And you know what's funny? The Triple X wanted to merge with the Tigers back then. It's in the minutes. And the Tigers voted no. They didn't want to merge with the Tigers. <laughs> <laughs> clubs are still around. There's plenty of stories from the Tigers. Most of the time they would do picnics, like I said, in the summer. Christmas parties, Valentine's Day parties. One time, though, and Martin might elaborate on this, they went to Vegas. Somebody paid for the entire Vegas trip. I think that's in Marvin's notes. Marvin's going to read some stuff. And then the initiations. We don't do this anymore. People used to be afraid to be initiated. In Francis. Francis in Virginia. <laughs> there were some crazy things in there. Probably can't get away with that anymore. All this woke stuff. Yeah. Probably past. So, initially the club was started because of a few guys that wanted to just have a fun time. We continue to have a fun time. Once a month we meet for dinner. It's great. We have a great time. And we're not going to let this thing die down. We're going to keep going. We're going to go another hundred years. Right, Joel? I'll be there for the next one. You're going to join? <laughs> that I, Supervisor Sal Quintero, for the Fresno County Board of Supervisors, on May 19, 2024, do hereby proclaim the year, the whole year of 2024, to be Sanger Tigers Club Centennial Anniversary. So you've got to We're about to celebrate the 100th year of the Tigers Club. So let's take a look back at the past years and reflect on what has transpired. As you know, the club was started by a group of young Sanger Armenian men 
who had a desire to meet girls. The driving force was Paul Tusi. He recruited his brother and many of his neighbors. Some of the names of these young men were Ernie Osepian, Charlie Ignoyan, Leo Children, Seto Kamen, Kenneth Nigerian, John Gray, Jurian, to name a few. The early meetings were held of many places. One of them was the Tucson Farm on, on the corner of Central and Greenwood, the southwest corner. They would drive their cars out in the middle of the field by the pump, the irrigation pump. When it was dark, they would turn on their headlights for light. Now, being club had nowhere to sit when they were at the meetings out in the fields. Each member would bring a picking box so they would have something to sit on. I, when I joined the Tigers in the early 70s, the club was meeting at home. To get, the, to get in the club, you had to have your name submitted by a member, and a $10 deposit had to be given at the same time. At the next meeting, the club would vote on you to join or not to join. This is how I really became a member. When a new member came into the club, we always had a dinner meeting with the wives. At this meeting, the new member was initiated, and the new member and his wife also. When every initiation was different, and they were all funny. Sark Russian Serenkian dressed up like a lion tamer and had me dress in a gorilla suit. After the dinner, Sark and I came in dressed up, and I think we scared the members at first. The other one was at the funny initiations when Prasitusa and Virginia Street came in dressed in their nurses' uniforms with a bunch of medical equipment. The equipment consisted of pliers, screwdrivers, hammers, and an inanimate bag. They sat the new member down, showed him all the medical things they had, and then blindfolded him and pretended to use the medical equipment on him. Then they had him reach down into a bucket of water that had a peel banana in it. The way they performed this initiation had to be one of the funniest things. Another big event was talked about was, for a long time was when Carl Tucson was buying Pepsi Cola stock when it was a young company. Carl told the club that if the stock hit a certain price, he would take the whole Tiger stuff to Las Vegas. Well, as it happened, the stock was expectations, and Carl took the whole club to Las Vegas. He said he, as he said he would. This was talked about for a long time afterwards. Bobby, do you think you have a joke? Do you have a joke, Bobby? Do you have a joke you can tell? Does he have a joke? <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a couple, let's have a couple jokes. When I go to church and you tell the dead heart, I got a lot of problems. That is a witch problem. Oh, he said, I'll spray, I'll call me, I'll have a dentist bill, <laughs> phone bill, I got too many bills, I can't pay for it. Oh, that is there's no problem. As you go home and open your Bible, you open your Bible up and you close your eyes and you put your hand on the, your finger on the page and you read that, if you read that page, it will be okay. So the guy says, okay. And he goes home and he opens the Bible, flips the pages, he puts the finger on, on, on one page. You know what the page said? <laughs> Chapter 13. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good clean joke. On the young couple, they, they have a baby. They, they have a baby. Walmart. So the, on the baby, and have, to have, to have a little kid, and the kid is only only year and a half, and he says, Mama, Mama. Oh, folks, that's it. The smart kid. Uh, a month later, and the kid says, Dad, 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 Dad. Oh, the kid is really smart. And the third month, he says, Mama, Dad, Dad, Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. One more. Here's your climax. How about 
Jesus Christ. And he goes to the doctor. He said, the doctor, there's something wrong with me. What's the problem? He says, when I touch my, uh, my finger, I touch his finger, it hurts. I touch it, hurt. I touch it, hurt. I touch it, where I touch it, hurt. So the doctor said, well, I got to examine you. Two doctors were four hours. They finally told the guy, how about we know what's wrong with you? He said, what's wrong? You haven't broken the finger. <laughs> Thank you.